Hello, just to explain what's going on there, we have one of these boards which for the time being is going by the name of S-Bus Mixer, but we really need a proper name for these. And it has an NRF24 module plugged into it, and this is one of the nice ones with the metal can, uh, the high power ones, they tend to be the best for transmission and reception. And this is being powered by a little 1S LiPo on the bottom. And over here we have a big hexacopter with Xiaomi Yi 4K and a nice slip ring gimbal controlled by a nice Storm32 controller over there and this is plugged into a nice S-Bus mixer over here with another NRF24 module on it for receiving the signal. Here are the programs running on those two S-Bus mixer boards because we need two of them, right? We have a transmitter and a receiver. So you would work on these in side-by-side -side browser tabs like this. I have my transmitter on the left, receiver on the right. And I'm not going to explain too much about this because I will do plenty of explaining in the future. But for now, I just wanted to give you an idea of what is involved in setting up a program like this. And hopefully you can see from just a handful of nodes here that are required that it's not too hard. And I'm kind of hoping that even without explaining any of it, it's kind of intuitive. But just a very broad overview. We, we want to take a value from the IMU or the accelerometer gyroscope. And we want to send that over the NRF24 radio link in channels 1 and 2, like that. And I wanted to send a value between 0 and 1. So I've done a little bit of scaling and shifting and clamping like that to make that happen. And then on the receiving side, we have um, NRF24 inputs this time. And the pitch, pitch one is very simple because that's an absolute value. So that just goes straight out to the servo output. So this servo output and that one are plugged into the Storm32, the gimbal controller. Uh, your, on the other hand, this is not an absolute value. This is a relative value. So we can't just say set the yaw to 30 degrees. Um, we need to say set the yaw to a little bit less than it is now or a little bit more than it is now, whatever, whichever way we want to turn it. Uh, so we need to take a delta of the last value. So that's kind of what's going on here. Uh, this dummy thing here is a bit of a hack that I had to do because I realized that basically I couldn't really do it without a hacky thing like this. But what I'll do in the future is these three nodes here will be condensed into one that does that job specifically. Um, so this in future will just be one node here and it will be a node called delta or difference or something like that probably. Uh, and then there's a bit of scaling there because it was too small if you just use the delta. Um, yeah, and uh, that's about all that needed to be done. So it actually took me about five times as long to do all the plugging in and sticking things onto the hexacopter and all the wiring and stuff than it did to set up this program, which is kind of nice. So for today's experiment, I've just stuck the S-Bus mixer on top of my Fat Shark goggles with a little bit of Velcro tape and some precision sellotaping. And I put a rubber band just loosely on here, and the idea of that is to make the antenna stand up vertically rather than sort of flopping down flat. So let's arm. Let's do some flying. So, you can see when I look up, we get up, down, we get down, left and right, and I am over there. And let's see if we can see if we can do this without screwing it up. So we want to arm, change into auto mode, raise the throttle a bit. And I'm just going to put the radio down because it'll look more impressive if I'm not doing anything with my hands, right? So that's me. Don't crash right now, please, because that, that would fall on top of me, wouldn't it? But we can go up here and look over the top of the hill. Look at the neighbor's farm. Oh, there's a bunch of uh, new bulls down there. They must have arrived last night. And then we go over to the top of the shearing shed, or the now defunct, disused shearing shed. 
So this is, some people ask, why is this building falling down? Uh, it's not used anymore. I mean, that doesn't mean, <laughs> that doesn't make it fall down, but I mean, you know, don't worry about it falling down because nobody uses it. Uh, so we stopped at those two points there for five seconds each. Now we're going to go down to the edge of that little clear patch straight ahead, right in the middle of the screen there. And my goggles are fogging up something fierce, so this is really annoying. don't know why I wasn't doing this yesterday. I, this is the fourth day I've done this now. And of course, when I decide that this is going to be the real one that I upload to YouTube, my goggles are fogging up like crazy. But I can still sort of see what's there, enough to aim the camera. So we're just going to go to the tip of this little bare patch of land, should be. And I think we stop here for five seconds as well. Not sure. No, it looks like we just keep going. Okay. So we're going, now we're going over. We're just going to follow this tree line. The tree's on the right, that is. And we're going to go straight back towards the pond and then back around the house and that's it. <laughs> so it's just a short little circuit just to check that everything's working and check that the... Uh, it's just for the head tracker check so and then it doesn't really matter what the mission is. But we can look down and up and everything. Looks like the pond is mostly clear of uh, that horrible pond weed. And then we just come back over, just sort of around the side of the cars there. And you can see see me there in the middle of the screen. Hello. Waving. And I hope you don't mind, I'm just going just gonna to wipe the goggles a bit because I can't see shit. It's really annoying. Alright, back on there, it's better. Hey, why is the horizon off? Look at that. The horizon's not level. Huh. Yeah, so it's just this circuit and I have enough battery to do this maybe one more time. Or what I, maybe I, what I should do is um, I want to maybe, might be a good idea to check how far I can get with this. Um, NRF24 module before it loses contact. So you can see now when I move my head the panning and tilting of the camera is nice and smooth but when you get out of range of the NRF24 module it starts to get a bit stuttery like only some of the packets are received. Um, so yeah from where I am now actually I might just uh, this is about as far as we get away. Let's see if I can fly this thing. I'll just put it into... Let's wait till we get away from the trees. <laughs> okay, so... Now we're in position hold mode. And I just have to figure out which way I'm facing. Turn it around. Okay, so the battery is pointing directly at my house there. Oh, and I'm starting to lose contact already. Oh, no. I felt like I lost a few packets there because it didn't respond when I moved my head straight away. Yeah, see that? Oh, oh, oh. Looks like we're, uh, we're descending, too. I didn't even notice that. Oh, shit. That was not intentional. Man, I'm glad I moved. I'm glad I let it get just past the trees there before I stopped. I forgot that my throttle position was going to be commanding the altitude now and position hold. So let's get a bit higher before we screw around with this. Unfortunately I can't even read the altitude on my screen because of the bloody fogging in my goggles. Why is it fogging so much? I might have to clean my goggles again. Sorry about that. but
Okay, so we're at 20 meters altitude and I'll just fiddle with the throttle stick here so it looks like the altitude's not going to change. All right. Now it should be the case that when I move the stick forward, we'll go away from my house like that. Okay, that's good. Problem is though, um, I'm going to have to turn my head around 180 degrees, which is going to make the antenna on top of my goggles facing away from the quad. So what I'm going to do is just I'm going to just quickly move my head to the side like that, real quick, and then that will let me flick it around so that now I just look for the feet of the X there. Okay, now we should be good to go straight forwards. And I can now read the altitude, thankfully. So let's just move forward a bit here. And I'll just go until it feels like the NRF24 module is not really like keeping a good smooth flow of packets. Oh, look at that steep, like, ravine or whatever down there. Still pretty smooth. Okay, now you see my head's moving, but the gimbal is not. Oh, now it is. Ah, uh, no. Okay, uh, I can't actually see on my OSD what the distance from home is there. Uh, but I do have the lat long showing, so I'll just have to go and look that up. Um, and tell you how far away it was when we stopped losing, or when we stopped receiving packets from the NRF24. But anyway, for now, I'll just pop it back into mission mode again. And now I can put my radio down, hopefully. Yeah. And clean my goggles again. Sorry, geez. I don't know why today. It's a nice, warm, sunny morning. I mean, the weather is just perfect. But why it's making me so hot and sweaty? I don't know, because it's not hot, it's just sunny. Oh, there we go, alright, sorry, we're facing the wrong way now, aren't we? Okay, so auto should bring us back to the end of that tip of the, um, the bare, patch of, uh, bare patch of ground over there. And I'm still, the movement's still a bit stuttery, see? I'm moving my head smoothly, but... We're not receiving all the packets. So I think facing away from home like this doesn't help much. I mean, I'm facing away from the quadcopter, that is. Hexacopter. Some balls down there. Right down below. Man, it's going quite slow, isn't it? Okay, so when we get to here, we should continue the mission. And the battery that I'm using is not really the healthiest of batteries. So I might just finish when I get back to home after this. I mean, you've seen how it works. And we even got a rough idea of the range. And it's enough to show you how natural feeling this is um, as a camera control idea. Maybe not so good for recorded footage, like if you're doing, um, <laughs> like making a movie or something, because every movement of your head it's going to react to, and you probably don't want that really. But it is quite good for just, you know, fun FPV experience. Alright, so I'll, I'll let it go up to the water tanks one more time and then I'll land it. Hello. Which way am I facing? Oh, okay. Anyway, hello balls. That's enough for today, I think. And I better just flip return to home from here, otherwise it's going to fly into the tree on the way back.
and I'm actually sitting on the home point so I'm gonna to have to get up and land this line of sight just in case it wants to land on me let's see where it's gonna land looking straight down oh no it's going over by where it took off by the cars I never quite know where the home point's going to be with this RG Pilot software. Because <laughs> yesterday, the other three times I did it, I took off from there, over by me, and it landed there again. Uh, and I thought it was landing according to the home point set in the mission. Okay, so actually, I can. Looks like I can just land this hands free. I mean, you know, it's landing itself. I'm not going to hit any, hit any cars here. Props all stop. Very nice, nothing broken. 